Converting drafted paper or fabric patterns into digital patterns is a great way of preserving them for use again later. Digital patterns tend to take up less space, and the printed versions of these patterns tend to be sturdier than the tissue paper or tracing paper patterns that you would have made originally. Digital patterns are also great if you're looking to sell your patterns or just share them with others. For digitizing patterns, I use Adobe Illustrator, but any vector-based digital art program will work just as well. Affinity Designer is an alternative to Illustrator that is is a one-time one -time fee instead of a monthly subscription. Or of course, you can use something like Inkscape, which is a free open source alternative with a lot of great resources and tutorials out there as well. While I'll be showing you my process in Adobe Illustrator, this tutorial is not gonna be going into the details about how to use an Illustrator or a specific program. Instead, I'm gonna be focusing on the kind of high level process and general way in which I go about digitizing patterns that you can transfer in between different programs. Let me know, of course, in the comments below if you're interested in more specific Illustrator-focused tutorials as well. With that, let's get started. To start your pattern, you're gonna need to create a new document. Now, you'll want to make sure that your document is scaled to an actual measurement, whatever measurement it is you prefer using. I work in inches because America, um, if you're working in centimeters, you'll wanna scale that to centimeters. This means that the document is in real size so that you can actually print it out um, at real size. Next, I start by just dropping the image that I took of the pattern. I take photographs of my patterns with a ruler in the picture so that I can size them and then scale them appropriately. Uh, in this case, I just laid the pattern pieces out as flat as I could on the floor. So there's some curling and stuff, but we'll, we'll work around that as we're tracing these images to create our digital pattern. And from there, I first have to scale the image when I dump it into Illustrator. So I scale these images because I'm using this nice square quilting ruler by basically making a box in Illustrator that is the exact dimensions of the ruler in real life, which in this case is two inches wide by 18 inches long. And I make it an empty box so that I can see the edges, make them a couple pixels wide. And obviously you can see this picture right now is way bigger than it needs to be. So we're gonna start shrinking this picture down till it gets a little bit closer. And then we rotate it just to line that ruler up. Keep shrinking it until it is as close as we think we can get it. You can see the reason I like to use a box instead of just a line is because there are times where my picture is not completely flat or square. So I actually need to adjust things um, not entirely evenly. So in this case, I need to make it slightly shorter and slightly, uh, slightly narrower, but I need to make it more shorter than more narrower. So doing it with the box is gonna give me a little bit more accuracy than a line would. Once I'm pretty comfortable with the sizing that I've made it pretty close, I kind of moved my box to the side. And now I'm just gonna focus on tracing each of these pattern pieces. I'm gonna start with this big piece here, which is I know to be one of my main sleeve pieces. And I'm going to place a mark on each of the corners just to start with. And then I'm going to start curving them to match the lines up, essentially tracing them just using the fancy tools that you can get in a vector program like Illustrator. And you're gonna repeat this process for each of the pieces that you have taken a picture of. For more complicated pieces like this, it's really just a matter of getting to know your program and how the curves draw uh, so that you can know where to place your various points to be able to kind of emulate those shapes as best as possible. 
and manipulate your handles into place. But the beautiful part about working with something digital is if you're not happy with this placement, you can just move the point until it's closer to where you need it to be to get the shape that you're looking for. Now, unlike me, I actually would also suggest taking your photo on something with more of a contrast than I did here. Uh, the yellow paper on the brown floor is not the best combination, but you know, you, you, work, you work with what you got. Now, some pieces you might only make half of them even though you have the full piece in front of you because I know, for example, this one is symmetric. So I'm only gonna make half of it because then I can just flip it and mirror it when it's done. Copy it, I'll reflect it. Once you're happy with the outlines of the shapes that you've made, I like to hide the image because now I need to work with just these pieces that I've traced so that I can make sure that the pieces that connect together on the pattern are actually the same length so they will connect together on the pattern. So for example, this is the overarm or the piece that sits kind of on the outside of the arm and this is the piece that sits on the inside of the underarm. I know that they connect together here and they connect together here. So I need to make sure that this piece or this length and this length are the same length. Now, every program is gonna give you this information in slightly different ways. So what I'm showing you here, which is the objects menu in Illustrator is just what Illustrator shows you. Now, Illustrator is unfortunately a little bit limited. So you have to separate out the segment. And in this case, I just copy it and then paste it. So all I'm looking at is just this line right here. So I can now copy it, paste it, compare this line and this line. So I know that this one is 14.56 inches and this one is 14.78. So I'm pretty close. I'm gonna try and mess with them just a little bit to make them even closer in length. And I like to do this by placing one on top of the other I make it a different color and this is gonna be the one that I'm gonna mess with and then I'm going to just match the other one to it. So keeping the menu, the information open so that I can see it, I'm gonna just make a few tiny adjustments. Start making this 
a little bit bigger on this side. So now it's 14.6 and on the other side, we'll make it a little bit smaller. So my goal is to try and get them both to about 14.6. Sometimes you don't actually need to adjust the curve as much as you just need to make it shorter or longer. Fourteen point five nine, fourteen point six. They're pretty close. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up the bottom layer to this top layer so they align, which will mean that the pattern pieces are now the correct size. Then you're gonna repeat this process across the other areas that connect up. Then once you're happy with all of these pieces being matched up and being the sizes that you want them to be, you're gonna start adding your guidelines and your mock-ups. So we're just gonna take a look at this one that I have already done. Probably the most important piece of information you put on is going to be your piece labeling. So you know what pieces they are and how many you're gonna cut. That'll help you whether you're selling this, giving this to someone, sending it to someone, or you or someone else is using this pattern. Uh, so for example, this is the center front and I know I want two of them. Whereas this one's the center back and I know I wanna cut one on the fold. So I make a note of that. So when it comes to adding notches, some lines will have really helpful like guidelines. Like I know this anchor point marks the center. So to do that, I'm just gonna take one of my little notch images. I'm gonna rotate it in the correct direction. And then I'm gonna just line it up, the center of it with that notch line. Nudge it maybe slightly. For doing sort of curved lines like these where I don't have handy dandy little points already there, I'm going to make a line of a standard length. In this case, I just picked two inches and I'm going to rotate it until it aligns with the line that's already there. Then I will take my little notches. In this case, I need to use a different one so you can tell what's going on. And I will align the center of this notch with the end of that line. And just rotate it so that this also aligns with the seam line. Then I'm going to repeat that process on the corresponding seam on the other piece. Alternatively for a piece like this, when you're adding a notch, if you don't have a center point, but you know it's symmetric and you just wanna put a notch in the center, I'm gonna create a line, a straight line that will give me a center point, And then I will make an intersection. And so now I know this line here is my center point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop a notch on that center point. Ooh, except actually. And that means that is in the center of that piece. And you can add a lot of your notches and a lot of your guidelines using little tips and tricks like that by rotating pieces, by creating guidelines. Illustrator is obviously a program that isn't and other vector programs aren't intentionally designed to make patterns like this, but you can definitely repurpose these programs to make patterns for cosplay, for other sewing projects. Um, and it works pretty well. It's obviously not as ideal, but it is definitely less expensive than professional pattern making programs, which can easily set you back a thousand dollars for a year subscription. From here, the pattern is ready to print and Illustrator already has built in tiling functions. For Illustrator, I can just tile full pages 
and it will automatically tile this area. Now, obviously I haven't cut my artboard down, so it's gonna print all these blank pages, but essentially it places them here. I can define an overlap. I like to have the paper overlap by about half an inch so that when it prints, I've got space to overlap those pieces of paper and tape them together more easily. And if you hit print it, because you've created your canvas at full scale at that inch scale, it will print it out automatically at the correct size. You can tape it together and then you have a pattern that you can work with. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about digitizing patterns or any other cosplay questions, leave those down in the comments below and let me know what you'd like to learn about next. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. You can also check me out live on twitch.tv slash random Tuesday or head over to my website, randomtuesday.com for more cosplay patterns, tutorials, and other resources. As always, thank you to each and every one of my patrons over on Patreon whose support make this video and these cosplays and so many other things a reality. If you're able to do so, any monthly amount is truly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.